Good morning, and welcome to the service of worship. I am the Reverend Bill Ingraham, and it is my distinct honor and joy to serve the heavenly realm and the city of Methuen as senior pastor of First Church Congregational of Methuen, Massachusetts, United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We are worshiping now um, hybrid, both in person and online. This month, we're restricting attendance to people who are vaccinated. We hope, plan to lift that starting next month, but we'll get the word out. Um, we are, everyone's wearing a mask unless someone's singing, um, the designated singers or speaking, um, as I'm doing right now. This is an example of speaking, in case you're wondering. Um, so people who are joining us on Facebook Live, please like or love the service, check in by posting a note, and sharing really helps. If you're able to share the service, hit the share button. Um, we have a lot of people who are watching our service now, and that's all because members of our church have promoted it in their networks. Also, after worship today, we're continuing Zoom fellowship. It starts at 11.15, and if I'm not there, it still starts until I get there and join. We had some people last week rush out of this service home and join the Zoom fellowship, and it's really nice. That link was in the email that went out Friday. It's also um, in the bulletin if you got that um, attachment on your email on Friday. Monday night will be the outreach ministry team. That's the only group meeting this week, and they are meeting online by Zoom. Also, Chapel School completed their year last year. It was a hard year for Chapel School. So we had um, smaller numbers, according to the state, yet the same number of teachers. So making that match economically, it was a while before we got attendance uh, enrollment up to where the school made it. By the end of the year, um, they were strong. And we had no incidents among our kids. It was just an amazing year. So they completed their year last Friday, and so they are on summer break. I am thrilled that there already are 40 kids signed up for next year. Um, our goal is 80 or more. So already by the time we ended school, we're at 40. So do keep praying for chapel school. More importantly, let people who have young children know that we have a place for them to learn and grow in a loving community. Um, so that means office hours are changed for the summer. Roberta, this summer, at least for the start of the summer, will be working on Wednesdays and Fridays. She does check email regularly, um, as do I. And then I do not keep office hours in the building, but I will gladly meet you by appointment here or somewhere else. Just let me know. Um, email, cell phone, or as always, if you call the church phone at any time, a message will be forwarded to Roberta and to me so we'll know what's going on. And those are the announcements I have for today. Remember, sign up um, starts on Tuesday for this service. You can either call or you can sign up online directly. Okay, joys and concerns. A joy to see people here. A joy that folks still are participating online. Um, I'm grateful for both. And the only prayer I have by name today is, of course, we're keeping Anita in our prayers and also Dottie. Um, we pray for them and that they have a sense of the love and care with which we all surround them. And then we remember the COVID-19 um, coronavirus pandemic is not over. We are doing very well. Massachusetts is second highest in the country for the amount of people that are fully vaccinated. So we're really making great progress and getting much safer. Um, and for the first time, there is no county in Massachusetts that is considered high risk for COVID-19, another good sign. So we're moving in the right direction. We're gonna to continue to be safe and intentional um, and pray, and then also be accepting of everyone as they make their choices on the walk through this pandemic. We pray for people in other parts of the world where it is quite dire, and we pray for everyone who is sick or recovering. Likewise, people who are living with um, long-term uh, medical conditions or physical ailments, people who are facing cancer or other difficult diagnoses, people living with mental illness, emotional illness, people living with substance use disorders, all the different things that touch our lives um, and have us feeling or being broken. We hold those in our prayers today. Okay. 
with those things shared, I'm going to invite um, Bob Donahue to lead us in our morning prayer. Good morning. My name is Bob Donahue, the happy liturgist. Happy because this is the first time in a year and a half I've been up here with people out there looking back at me. And for those of you at home watching me in your pajamas, I'm happy to read for you too. Please join me in the morning prayer. We give you thanks, God of heaven and earth, for the countless blessings you bestow upon us and all creation. You make your love known through Jesus, holding us in your mercy both throughout this life and the life to come. Embolden us, we pray, so that we might serve you in all we say and do. Help us to follow the example of Christ our Savior, in whose name we gather and serve and pray. Amen. Thank you to the singers. So I always have been bad at singing, singing hymns and worship. I sometimes make up my own words. I sometimes get lost and sing the wrong line. And now that I'm one of the designated singers in worship, it always shows up. So if there's an error in words, I'll just, like at a basketball game when you go foul, um, it's me. I'm the one. So we are ready for children's time. And so I invite all the kids at home um, to listen, especially for this just for this one little moment in the service. Of course, we'd love for you to listen to every minute of the service. Um, but right now, this message is for you. And children, youth, young at heart, really everybody. So have you ever seen something and not recognized what it was? Has that ever happened to you? It's a funny thing. The mind can play tricks on you. I got, or I saw on Facebook, somebody had listed, uh, just put a picture, and there was a little... Pardon me, I have...
frogs today. Um, it was a picture and it had this kind of dark object and then a woods in the background. And it said, and I, I saw it and I saw this man running into the woods. And it said, do you see a man running into a woods or a dog running toward you? And I looked again at the picture and no longer was it a man running into the woods, it was a poodle running at me. Now that's the craziest thing. And so I could look at it and imagine it being a man, and it was, and I could look at it and imagine it being a dog, and it was the exact same picture. This is not one of those lines drawn thing where you see a old woman or a young woman. It wasn't, any, it was just a photograph, but depending on how you looked at it, and I think maybe what you were assuming, you saw different things. It just fascinated me. So I've always known that if I look at something, I might see it and understand what it really is, or I might see something else because that's what my mind is seeing. I say always. As an adult, I've always been aware of that. And also that standing over here and looking out, I see something one way, and if I were standing over there and looking at the same thing, I would see it differently. Perspective makes all the difference where you're standing, where you're sitting, what you're thinking about. Even what you're expecting makes a difference in what you see and how you see it. Well, I raise all of that because in the scripture today, the Apostle Paul, in speaking to members of the church in Corinth, says we no longer see things from a human point of view. What do you think that means? To see something, not to see something from a human point of view. Of course, what Paul's talking about is seeing something from a divine point of view. Seeing something the way God wants us to see it. How do we learn to see things in the way God wants us to? Well, one of them, I think, is by attending to God's ways. We come to worship, whether it's online, at home, or here in the room. And um, throughout our history from now on, both of those are going to be options. Maybe we see something from God's point of view by listening to what other faithful people have come to understand is God's point of view. And so we learn God cares about hungry people. God cares about sick people. God loves all people, regardless of any divisions, there might be any differences there might be. God empowers people. God wants us to have a sense of wholeness. And so as we learn these things about God, we learn to see from God's point of view. And then here's one last thought I want to leave with you. Have you ever had somebody who really annoyed you? I mean really annoyed you. If you have siblings, maybe it was one of your siblings, although actually I think probably every sibling at one point is annoyed at another sibling, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe as a, um, you've been annoyed by your parents, a teacher, a classmate. What would change if in that moment, rather than seeing that person who's annoying you, as you see them as somebody who's just annoyed and frustrated and tired and put out and doesn't even want to deal with them anymore, instead sees them as somebody that God loves completely, just as God loves you. That makes a difference for me sometimes. And I hate to admit it, but sometimes I get frustrated with somebody and then that interacts on every single thing I do with that person. I just expect them to frustrate me every time. And I need to step back and change my perspective and recognize that God loves them just like God loves me. And if I can learn to try to see like God sees, well, then there's a chance I could live in the world as a different person. And maybe I'll help make the world a better place. Maybe I'll even be happier as I do it. Please pray with me. Dear God, help us to see from your point of view 
and help us to love like Jesus loves. Amen. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thanks, Carol and Joe. So we come now to our time of prayer together. I invite you, please, to pray with me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we cannot thank you enough. You bless us in countless ways, and we are grateful beyond measure true at at times we forget our days can be difficult our burdens heavy our lives challenging there are moments that it is very hard for us and it can be easy for us to neglect to offer you our thanks and our praise yet it is the case in all those times of difficulty and trouble 
you are present with us and hold us in love. Even when we are unaware, even when we do not remember your love and your compassion or your presence, even when we do not sense you around us, even when we feel lost and in despair, uncertain, even afraid, you hold us and give us hope and strength. And through our lives, through our days, you are present with us, whatever the measure our days may have. And you hold us in love and compassion that will never let us go, not in this lifetime or in the life to come. For we are yours now and forever. We bring to you today both our joys and our concerns, those burdens of our lives and of our hearts that weigh us down and make it difficult. And so we offer to you prayers prayers for those who are sick, prayers for those who are living with long-term ailments, medical conditions, disabilities, whatever the sense of brokenness may be um, in body in any way that may be. We also pray for people living with um, mental health issues, mental or emotional illness. We pray for people living with substance use disorders. We Pray for people in any of, the, any of the ways that keep us from feeling whole or being whole in body, mind, or spirit. And God, we pray for healing. We pray for everyone who helps with healing. We pray for therapists, for doctors and nurses and physicians assistants and everyone in, who in any way works for wholeness of body, mind, and spirit uh, for 12-step groups and programs for any, anything that helps us to find our way and to know wellness of body and spirit, we give you our thanks and our praise. We are aware, too, of prejudice and hatred and fear, the ways they can infect us and the ways they can affect us. God, we ask your forgiveness for the ways we fall short of universal love and respect and ask you to help us to see the dignity and worth of each person, ourselves and others, and to work to tear down the walls that divide us and to create a real community of equal, equal blessing, equal empowerment. All these things we pray in Christ's name. We pray too for the world around us, we are well aware of the COVID-19 coronavirus, grateful for vaccinations, grateful for treatments, grateful for the um, ebbing of infection rates in our community and in our nation, and aware too of the ways they are flowing increasingly in other parts of the world. We pray for continued vaccinations. We pray for wise decisions in um, personal lives and in societies around the world. We pray for everyone on the front line trying to bring hope and health and wellness to our world. And we ask you to help us to be patient and respectful and by your mercy to continue to keep us safe and make us thankful. We pray for this church. We are grateful for the year Chapel School had and grateful for all of our teachers and our um, director, Cindy, for our office manager, both of church and school, Roberta, everyone who helped to make this year successful for the children we minister to as a part of that program. We pray for our outreach, the food pantry, the upcoming back to school project, all the different ways we seek to do genuine acts of kindness in our lives and to serve you and meet the needs of people in real ways. Bless us, we pray. Help us to be your church serving you right here and throughout the world. Hear now the silent prayers we offer in Christ's name.
All these things we pray in the name of Jesus as we say the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now have a moment to receive the morning offering. There is by the door an offering plate, and a number of people have put their donations in there as they came. Many others of us, some have mailed their checks already or will mail them this week. Some of us are e-givers. I'm one of those e-givers that comes out on the 15th. In fact, I... I've never said this before, but I have on my calendar, on the 15th of every month, I've drawn a little outline of the sanctuary of our church. I don't know why, just to remind me that the offering is coming out of my account that day, I guess, but also it's a celebration to remember that I get to give some of my financial resources to support a church I love and respect and appreciate so much. So now is your chance to make your gift. Listed on the page, um, at the bottom of the page now, is the link to our website. And we hope you'll take a moment, whether it's to support this church or some other worthy cause, to show your appreciation to God by giving part of what you have. We now will receive the morning offering. The scripture reading this morning comes from the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 10 and 14 to 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 
Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who might live, live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. May the living word of God speak to us through these ancient words of Scripture. As I listened to Bob read that scripture, I was reminded of Sarah Dockham's commissioning service. Um, we had, I don't know, a huge number of people watch that online, and uh, commissioning as an officer in the United States Marine Corps, and Bob helped to coordinate that, and we had the distinct honor of having that happen right here in this church, and broadcasting it on our Facebook page, and um, I was just reminded of the... What, if you didn't call it shout out. What is it? There's a term when you speak up really strongly and loudly. Rock the house. Rock the house. So Marines like to rock the house. Um, and it is, a, it is a way of saying what you have to say with confidence and certainty and strength. Um, Bob just read that scripture, rocking the house, with confidence and strength. And it's appropriate because the passage starts out with, so we are always confident. <laughs> Are you always confident? Maybe you are. I'm not always confident. And those who know me well, and I think there's few people in this room who don't, I've been here a little over five years now, uh, know that there are times I'm not confident. There's times I'm not confident about how things are going to go. Um, there are times I'm not confident in my capacity to meet the moment. There are times I'm not uh, confident in so many ways. I try not to be. I am very much a man of faith and strive very much to live as a man of faith and to inspire others to be people of faith that all of us can be. Con so, uh, uh, my confidence is, my lack of confidence is sometimes in me. I'm not lacking confidence in God. Um, and so I try to call on my confidence about God to be confident myself. And I think maybe that struggle within myself really gets right down to the basis of Paul's theology, the Apostle Paul. Paul who wrote the, what we have in our scriptures as two letters to the church in Corinth, um, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. I, I had said last week, uh, really, 1 Corinthians is a solid letter. Start to end, um, we're pretty sure in the Greek, in the all of the manuscripts that we have show that preserved as one letter. But as we study 2 Corinthians, those of us who study in Greek, um, and I don't do it very well anymore. I've lost a lot of my Greek, but it's pretty clear that it's multiple letters, that letters have been taken and merged by the folks that, um, well, maybe leading up to the people that decided what books were going to be in the Bible, but for sure it's fragments of different letters. But one of the key issues of Paul's theology is what we refer to as the already and the not yet. So that is, we are already saved, but that salvation is not yet made complete because we still are in our frail bodies and in this world. Already God has reconciled creation, but it is not yet the case that everybody knows. And so there is this uh, balance of what is established and what's true and what is not established um, and what not yet made true for all. And so I think that leads to my lack of confidence sometimes. I'm completely confident in God, yet I still have all my 
frailties and capacity, uh, if nothing else, at least to worry and doubt, if not actually to make uh, bad choices, to fail to be loving, to uh, fall short of God's intention of being a good and caring person. Okay, I'm not a terrible person. I'm just human, right? I'm not saying I'm terrible. Um, and if you think I'm terrible, well, you might be right. I hope you're wrong. Um, and so Paul, Paul in this passage talks about our being at home. We're at home in the body and we're at home with the Lord. But right now we're at home in the body and so separated from the Lord. So we're at home, but we're away. There's this whole uh, contrast of already and not yet, here and not there. And it's just laying out that human reality of our living in a state of not yet being completely what God would want for us. So I um, have studied Wesleyan theology in particular. I grew up in and came out of the United Methodist Church and the Methodist tradition. And in Wesleyan theology, there is a notion, um, an understanding that uh, grace has three parts. I remember once in seminary, after I had become a member of the United Church of Christ, having a Lutheran student say, wow, um, United Methodists are so sophisticated that they divide God's grace into three distinct parts, um, trying to say that, you know, grace is grace. Uh, but the, the way that Wesley understood it, that to me is helpful, is that there is prevenient grace, that grace of God that existed even before creation and before any of us was alive, before any of us made any statement or had any thought about faith whatsoever, prevenient grace, that grace that exists for all creation ahead of time. There's justifying grace, the grace that um, allows us to recognize and live in complete relationship to God, not because we deserve it, but because God has brought us there. There are those who would see it um, differently, um, justifying grace that Christ's death on the cross pays for our sins and allows us to be loved by God. I don't I don't quite go there because I think God's grace is for all people. Um, I'm not wanting, I don't want you to hear me being critical of you if that's your view, not at all. It's just not where I am. So I, so I think of justifying grace as that grace of God that allows us to recognize that we are loved by and in relationship with the divine. It's a, a chance to recognize potential, if you will, what our, what our potential is. Um, as children of God's love. And then sanctifying grace that over a lifetime helps us to become more holy. It's another expression of the already and the not yet uh, that Paul has undergirding all of his theology. And it's an understanding of being in the body and with the Lord. That frail human place where we're not yet fully um, as God would have us be, and also at the same time, held in God's love and care for all eternity, someday not to have anything separate us. So that's what Paul is talking about in this passage, and it leads me to the point that I was trying to make during the children's time, that we have then the opportunity to try to see things from God's point of view and to learn to live with an understanding that we are in God's divine care. We are in God. We are one with God that can allow us to be empowered for living. The way Paul puts it here is that um, he talks about by in Christ's death, um, all have died. It, it, so it's both that understanding of uh, the sinful nature dies, um, but also that if we already on, in Christ's name have experienced death and we're free to live in a new way now, trusting that we are a part of the eternal life that God offers us in Jesus the Christ. And so we seek to change our perspective to see as God would have us see. And part of the scriptures that Bob read so confidently, 
From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. We know from God's point of view. And then we allow ourselves allow ourselves? Do we allow ourselves for God's mercy to be at work in us? I think we allow ourselves for God's mercy to be at work in us, but sometimes I think God overcomes who we are and what we are, even despite, pardon me, even despite our best efforts otherwise, that God somehow manages to seep in, sneak in, break in, become a part of the essence of who we are and change how we live, change how we see change, what we perceive, help us to recognize our place in God's boundless, universal, eternal love. Paul ends, uh, well, our passage ends here. Paul doesn't end here. Our, our passage ends here with one of my favorite expressions of Christ, I mean of Paul. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, there is a new creation, a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. All things have become new. And all things are in God who has reconciled us to God's self in Jesus Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. As we seek to be followers of Jesus, as we strive to let Christ's love be a part of our core identity, to penetrate into the depths of who we are, as we seek to open ourselves up to the reality and the knowledge and understanding that God loves us and loves all, it fundamentally starts to change who and how we are in the world and allows us to direct our lives to to fulfill God's purpose right here in our town and in our lives, but also in the world around us as we seek to be a part of God's work on earth. This church for nearly three centuries has gathered to worship in this community and has sought to be servants of God in this place and beyond. And one of the ways we do that is seeking to know to see from God's point of view and to recognize the love that holds us and all and be inspired by that love to make a difference in how we live. Please pray with me. Gracious, loving God, we give you thanks for your countless blessings for us and ask you to make us new creatures In Christ's name, inspiring us not only to know your love ourselves, but to share your love with others in all the ways possible for us. This we pray in faith. In Christ's name, amen.
Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Receive now the benediction. Go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do, trusting God's love and compassion to hold you this day and always and empower you to become something new and to make God's love known. Amen. Amen.